hopefully that'll be where I need to be. Okay. All right, well, good morning. Let's get started. So just find you a good place to feel like you are centered. You have plenty of space to move. Just body nice and relaxed. Legs hip distance apart. So they should be basically straight down from your body. I like to, I always like a little wider stance. That's just me. Um, but you definitely don't want to be standing here, nor do you need to be like this. Just a nice, good, comfortable, loose stance. Ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips. Just body nice and relaxed. Very good. Let's take a breath up. And exhale down. So what we're doing is gathering energy, beginning to get our focus going by just pulling the energy around us and think of sinking it down into the earth. Pull it up and around and down. Keep going. I'm going to turn the music down just a little bit. Make sure you can hear it, but not too much. Good. Breath and sink. So what we're doing here is just getting the body awake, getting you to focus your breath just on how it makes your body feel as you bring that energy in and settle your mind into the workout, moving the shoulders, softening the knees, just waking everything up. Couple more. Good, now turn those palms up. Let's pull the energy in. You can interlock your fingers, turn your palms away and stretch up, big lift. Now once again, bend down, breath and stretch up. In Qigong, this is called um, supporting heaven like a pillar, but we're just stretching, lengthening the torso, bend when you inhale. And exhale, push up and back and around. Now shake everything up and let's try our tapping. Tapping is such a good way to wake up all the blood flow in your body from deep within to the surface of the skin. So what we're doing is just stimulating those nerve endings, helping that blood flow. Let's go across and go over to the other arm and it just sort of opens up those meridians, those channels of energy throughout your body, waking them up, letting them flow freely, head to toe. Good, now let's bring that chop down to the inside of the thighs and then up the outside. So I say chop, we just, uh, right on the outside of your little finger, just little taps up and down, inside, across the hip, and then outside. Now let's go just slapping the tops of your thighs, work down the front of your leg. Don't forget the tops of your feet and then tap up the back. Just sort of linger here just a little bit in the lower back. Keep going. I'm going to let someone else in the room. Keep tapping up and down those thighs. Very good. All right. And linger a little bit here in the lower back. Very good. Now just stay there and tap. Simulating the kidneys, the lower back, all those organs back there. Now work your way around the abdomen. Oh, weight of everything in your belly. Cross your hips. Good. Work your way up to your chest. And the back of your head. Now take your fingertips and just guide them all along your scalp and over to your forehead and your temples working your way underneath your eyes helping with sinuses great for headache and tension and back to your jaw under your nose across the upper lip and chin and just repeat if you feel any areas that you want to spend a little more time waking up don't forget just to tap that chest. Bring that blood flow to the surface. 
Very good. Now to shake everything out, that should feel good. Let me adjust this again. I want you to be able to see my arms when I go up. I can't quite get my screen where I want it to be. Good deal. Good deal. Breathe up again and sink that energy and then gather it out and about. I would like you to interlock your fingers behind your back. I'm going to turn sideways. Hips are relaxed. Knees are soft. Just open your chest. Press your shoulders down. Feel that wonderful stretch in your chest. Breathe. Now release the arms. Let them hang by your side. Knees are soft. Curl your body forward. You got a couple of options. At first, just go about halfway down and just let that lower back stretch, kind of getting rid of that morning stiffness from getting out of bed or sitting a lot. If you need additional support, put your hands on your thighs, not your knees. Let your body hang about halfway and let the head be relaxed. You don't want to hold on to the neck, but you want it to just totally relax as if the top of your head is facing down and into the earth. Breath, eyes open, soften the knees a bit more, pull your belly button in and imagine that you were uncurling a piece of paper, which is your body. Lift up again. Good, sink the energy and let your body go ahead and roll with it down. And go a little bit further if you need a little more, you know, support. If not, let your body go a little deeper. Feel the stretch a little longer. Knees stay soft. Weight is between the arches of your feet and your heels. Breath. Eyes open. Exhale up. Uncurl. If you think of pulling your belly button as you uncurl, you'll get each vertebrae stretching. And now let's do it again. Ground forward. Let the body hang. If you want to go a little bit deeper, you can. Again, you got your hands if you need them for support. Very good. Now, whenever you are, wherever you are, soften your knees, put your hands on your thighs, uncurl about halfway. Now, I want you to think of sticking your backside out, leaning your chest and torso forward. Knees are a bit straighter. See how my body is um, parallel to the floor? So that's what we want to try to achieve is a, what we would call in fitness a flat back. Still pulling those elbows in because they're kind of acting like a girdle or support for your spine. You should feel wonderful stretch through your hips, through the back of your legs. Now take a breath. Soften the knees and round your body again. So see, we're back into a C. A little cat-cow type movement from yoga. Breath. Now exhale. Press your body forward. Try to straighten those knees and flatten your back. Very good. Let's do that one more time. Breath. Soften the knees. Round your back. Should be a wonderful way to stretch that back out. Breath. And then exhale, push the back side out as you bring your body forward. So you're still sort of, um, you're forward with the weight between the um, balls of your feet and your arches here. Very good. Soften the knees and round up. Good. And shake it all out. Now legs, do take them just a little bit wider, what we would call a horse stance, and just let your body sway side to side. Now, we're beginning to do some balance transfer, warm up the quads a bit more, but also still working on centering your body. So when I'm moving side to side, my torso is still over my hips, I'm not like doing this, okay? Good. Just a little lift in the leg. That will get your outer thighs engaged a bit. Make it a little more cardio for you. Side to side, good. Now let's take the feet to the floor. Let's stop the arms for a second and then just shift sort of a little bit of a lunge, so to speak. Good. 
Come over to the right, turn your left toes forward, shift back and open that right toe and you to your Tai Chi bow step. And we're gonna push and pull some waves. So let's push and pull those waves. I love this one because it's so good for the upper back, for your posture, for your breath, because you're opening the chest, stimulating blood flow and oxygen through your breath, through the chest, giving that heart lots of space to beat and do its thing very efficiently. Ah, breath in and out. Just feel how good it feels to bring those arms in and open that chest. And keeping your head upright, it's very good for posture, neck and upper back. Ah, breath. Ah, good, just breathe. And let this just freely move through you. It should just flow. Let's do four more. Going a little bit faster today because I'm using it more as a warm up than um, a relaxing stretch. Now let's go forward, hold it, turn your arms, make sure your shoulders relax, close that right foot, shift the weight, open the left. Good. So we're just shifting front and back. Here we go. Breath, push that way. Good. And the reason we go side to side, it helps open up the hip of the leg that you're shifting back on. It's great for the torso, your core. Good. Keep going. Just a nice flow. Looks great, y'all. Keep going. Good. Let's do four more. Three, two, good. Now, come back to the center. From here, we're closing the feet, and we're just going to do a wax on, wax off movement. So this is more of a spiral in the torso, thinking of your spine just turning right over your hips. So just shift and shift, remembering that the movement is beginning and occurring from the hips. So if you didn't have the arms, your body would be doing this. And the arms just help you imagine the flow. You might want to start out with a smaller turn and as you get more loosened up, make your turn a little bit bigger. And just wax on, wax on. Good. Still warming up. Breathing in and out. Let's do two more, one to each side. Now let's drop the arms, turn the body, and let the arms just beat around your body. This is called beating the drum. Just kind of let them um, bang against your body. It's as if you're actually massaging the kidneys, lower back, because you just let those arms swing as you rotate side to side. Good. Couple more. Good. As you come back to the center, just let your body stop and your arms just sort of stop on their own. Good. Breathe out. Gather that energy and then go ahead and lower. So this must want you to lift the arms up about chest level. And just feel the energy as you create it by straightening the legs. It goes out the fingertips and it drops. So just imagine it builds up from your feet and the energy goes right back down to your feet. So build and lift. Ah, exhaling out. Good. A couple more. Last one. Very good. Now we're going to step away from doing a Tai Chi type move and we're going to do another really good strengthening functional movement. So what I would like you to do is shifting to the right. Imagine you were going to pick something up off the floor. You're going to bring it and lift it and turn and put it up on a shelf. So this movement is very functional to anything you're doing day to day life. So you press down 
and turn. And it uses just about every muscle group in your body. So start maybe slowly at first. Reach. You'll feel it in your core, your abs, your quad, your hip. You want to keep um, the lunge where the knee is right over the second toe of the foot. So don't twist, but reach and push. Nice rotation using just about every muscle in your body. And go as fast or slow as you're comfortable. I'm going to do four more. So you do your four more. Three. Two. One. Come back to center. Because guess what? I've got the other side to do. So get in your position, go down to the side, and then reach and turn it up. Down, reach and turn it up. Good. This should be getting your uh, body temperature warmed up, whether you feel your heart rate increase a bit or whether you feel um, just the warmth from the movement, a little perspiration, that's good. Push. Functional movement. Something you might do around your house nearly every day in some variation or the other. Four more. Three. Two. Last one. Good. Back to the center. Shake all that out. I'm sure you felt everything moving. I hope you did. Let's do some lunges while we're in the cardio going. Let's do some weight transfers and changes. So I want you to step forward with your right foot and together and back. Left, just step. So it's a weight transfer. If you're strong enough and you wanna take it into a deeper lunge, that is up to you as long as you keep that 90 degree angle in your front leg and your knee doesn't go out over your toe. Or you can just do just a weight shift. So choose whichever option is best for you. And let's add some arms. Push, pull back, push. So I'm doing these arms with the shoulders parallel to the floor. It's a little different. Just push, pull back, push. Work in the upper back a little bit different way as we lunge. Good. Push, pull back. And do a variation of it however works for you in the intensity you feel like you want to work. Good. This is our last four. Three, two, and one. Arms down. So now I want you to turn to the corner, toe out, come together. Corner, together. So not too much different than the bow step in Tai Chi. Corner. I want you to put your hands on your hips, or on your thighs. So to remind you to keep your torso right between your feet. Good. Looks good. Side. So you turn your whole body in the direction you're going. Knee towards second toe. Good. Together. Side. Let's do four more. This is still working your quads because even though you're lunging to the side, the knee is forward. Now we're going to work the inner and outer thighs. So step together, step side. Now as I'm stepping side, my toes and knees are forward and I'm going in and out with my inner and outer thighs. So I'd like for your arm to push out and in, push out and in. So even though we're pushing to the side, we're still keeping our body stacked. And in. Push out, together, and out, together. Good. Push, and push. Four more. Three, two, and one. Now let's step back. So we're going to step back together, back, together. 
you can either just step back or you can go into a lunge. Whatever you feel is best for you. Let's press the arms back and then tap to the shoulder. Press back, shoulder, back. And that gets the triceps warmed up, the back of our upper arm. Good. Pushing the leg back will stretch your hip flexor a bit and also cause you to use your glutes, that's the muscles in your backside, keeping them strong, keeping that whole hip girdle um, balanced and stronger. And back. All right, four more. Three, two, and one. Very good. So while we're still working on the legs, grab your chair. We haven't done a lot of standing leg supported stuff lately, so I want to do some. Put the chair on the right side of your body. It can either be facing front or side because basically you just want, you're using it like a ballet bar. So in the right, which means we're going to work the left leg first. What I would like you to do, we did this similar with the band. Put all your weight on your supporting knee. Um, your right knee, keep it soft. And right now I've just got that leg like this. All right, and the other hand can be on by your side or on your hip just to remind you to keep yourself balanced. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna lift that left knee. Push the heel forward, lift the knee, push the heel back. Knee lift, forward, knee lift, push back. Let me turn the side and show what it looks like. Knee. Push back, excuse me. Knee up, push forward, knee in, push back. Very little movement in your um, core because I want you to work the glute. If we move the body more, um, you know, we would be working lots of other things. But I want you to just focus on in, pushing back. Good, hip flexor, hip flexor stretch. Good. All right, one more. Knee in, push out, in, push back. Very good. Now bring that leg in, press your heel down, then point your toe and heel, toe and heel. This time hold at the toe, take it into a semicircle behind you, pull through and forward, semicircle. So basically, really making a letter capital D as you're taking it around, pulling it in. Good. Just right along the floor. Very good. Now let's try that backwards. So back, bring it around and in. Back. If you wish to lift the leg off the floor a bit, that's fine. Especially, if, I'm just thinking if you have carpet, it might be easier just to have the leg a few inches off the floor. Good. Let's do one more. And in. All right, by now I guess your right leg is probably getting a little tired, so shake it out. So we did a lot of the outside of the leg. I do want to get an inner thigh. Um, uh, exercise simply because lots of times we don't really focus on the inner thigh that much. Leg is forward. Now you can either keep the foot low on the floor or you can lift it up a bit. I'm going to lift mine up a bit. Just want to imagine you're taking that um, outside leg, tapping it on your chair, and then bringing it back to middle. You can go a little bit beyond middle. We don't want you to go big because then you end up twisting on the standing leg. So I just want you to get the inner thigh center inner thigh. So imagine you were squeezing. You can even put your hand there and press against um, the leg as if you're trying to keep it from pressing and you'll feel the inner thigh muscles working. We're going to do eight. Let's do four more. Three, two, and one. Very good. Shake that out. And um, I'm going to move my chair because now we're going to work on the other side. Okay, so you've got your supporting leg, your hand either here or down, whichever is easiest for you. And let's start with the heel forward, pull in, 
push back and press forward and push back and kick forward and you may ask why heel flex well it's you can feel more power when you're pushing that heel out now do it with a pointed toe and it takes on a more dancey takes on a whole different feel the foot flex you feel like you've got power and you actually can contract those muscles even bigger let's do four more and back and three and two last one all right shake that out you're supporting like me you're getting a little tired and now we're going to draw our little semicircle on the floor so this time toe and flex and toe heel toe now let's draw that circle remember um if you do have carpet, you may want to be a few inches off the floor. Circle around and in. Good. The goal is to do eight of each. I hope I'm counting right. This would be four more. And three. Two. And one. Now we're going to go backwards. So back and around and two, three, four, five, six, good job, seven, hang in there last one. Very good, shake out that supporting leg a bit. In the meantime, you know, that you need to stop and not do eight consecutively, that is fine. Okay, heel out, and let's work on the inner thigh. So we're going to touch over and center. Squeeze that inner thigh. Six, five, four, three, two. And one. Very, very good. All right, shake all that out. We're going to set the chair aside and get our band. I don't know about y'all, but I'm warm. Bring the bands around um, underneath your armpit. I mean, yeah, underneath your arms, about where your bra would come around and back. Thumbs and ends forward. Okay? And I'm going to um, have my toes and knees forward, but open just a little bit. And I might even turn out just a little bit for the stationary one, because this is requiring a lot of stability in the lower body as you're moving the upper body and working the waist. You want to be sure you got a good base of support under you. Plus, that helps you stretch the inner thighs, squeeze your glutes, squeeze in the back of your leg. Thumbs forward, shoulders down, breath. And just take that right arm, punch, pull back punch, pull back. And this is a point where you can adjust your band. If it's too tight, then you want to make it looser. If it's too loose, you just choke up on the band. Now, right now, we're just punching forward and in minimal movement in the waist, a little bit. But right now, we're just getting the chest and the back warmed up and the biceps and the triceps warmed up. One more. Good, now let's take it to the corner. So corner, center, corner. My lower body is still stationary, so there's a reason for this. Getting the rotation in the torso, getting that core, your inner, in, internal and out, uh, external oblique, excuse me, are rotating with you, working that core. Push, and side, punch, and look at the direction that you're punching that arm. Last set of four, three, two, one. Now we're gonna put a little bit more of the whole body in it. So bend and punch, punch. So in the center, bend and kind of like a little bitty plie and punch. 
punch and lifting up that back leg and just pivoting on the ball of your foot. Punch it, punch it. A little more cardio, a little more full body in, um, involvement. Push, push. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. All right, back to the center. We're gonna vary the speed and just punch, punch, punch. It's okay to go on speed, but if you can vary the speed, you work so many different muscle fibers in your body and your brain has to adjust. So pump, pump, push, push. Good, you got it, you guys looking great. Punch it out there. Get a little bit of anxiety out if need be. Punch eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Slow it down and punch up and over to the corner. So now the arm is going up, still the same movement, still feel the squeezing in the hips and the torso and your obliques. Push, but slightly up. So you're getting a little more shoulder involvement. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Very good. Open those arms out and pull them back. By this I mean, you're going to open the chest. You worked. A lot of chest muscles. Now we're squeezing the shoulder blades behind you. Come forward, wrap them around your body. Open again and pull back. So same thing, I'm just gonna show you from the side. Breath, exhale, pull in. Breath, open out. One more time, pull in, inhale, exhale out. Okay, so we have the band behind us. So I want you to bring it down. Again, I'm going to go ahead and turn to the back. So you've got your thumbs and the ends out to the side. Wonderful stretch in your chest still going on. At this point, I don't want you to arch the back. You still got the knees soft. You got your um, glutes squeezed. And just a few presses outward to the side to just open. Open, release with control. This is very difficult. This part of our upper body, for most part, is really weak. Press. Good. A few more. Working right across the top of that deltoid. Four more. Three. I think we've done this one before. If we have, it's been a long time. Two. And one. Hold. Ah. All right. Give those shoulders a much needed massage. Just a couple of circles back and around. Oh, that feels good to loosen that up. And a couple of rolls forward. Two, three, and four. Very, very good. Okay, I'm gonna put the band down. Let's get the chair again. Turn the seat towards you. We're gonna do some yoga stretches. So. Hopefully you're okay with that now. So let's start out. Go ahead and put your hand on the back of the chair, the legs hip distance apart, and just round and stretch back. I love this one because it just feels so awesome down the back of the leg, as well as the lower back, and all the way through the upper back, underneath your arms. Very good. Go ahead and walk your feet towards your chair to uncurl up. Very good. Let's take our hands down to the side of your chair. Um, or what I'm probably going to do is make just a fist with my palm out and press it down. That keeps my um, wrist in alignment and it's good if you've got carpal tunnel or arthritis issues. Take your back leg or your right leg, whichever way your chair is facing and bring it close to the chair. Then step the other one back in a little bit of a runner stretch, but turn the toe out in a little bit of a bow step, okay? So we still have our torso facing the seat of the chair, but we've got that back leg turned out just a little bit. Breath, gonna lift that front arm up and let's do a side stretch, reaching up. So right now, You've got the front knee bent. If you're comfortable or you want to take it into a yoga triangle, you can straighten that leg, 
and reach up. You want to try, and I'm not doing a really good job of it myself right now, but you want to try to keep this shoulder straight over your chair, if you can. Kind of depends on your chair and the movement and a little bit of all the different factors you may have at home. Slow the breath down, wonderful stretch. Breath, bring that arm down. We're just gonna reverse it. So feet stay the same and twist to the back. Same thing. Breath. And hands come down. Keep your feet where they are. Pull your abs in as you come up. Bring both arms up. And we're going to do a yoga warrior one. So elbows are wide, shoulders retracted, chest open. Eyes about 45 degrees out. Also, too, if you push under, you get an awesome hip flexor stretch. Breath, bring your arms down, turn your torso toward the front. Now let's bend that front knee into a yoga warrior two. Let your eyes face out over the fingertips, shoulders relaxed, arms parallel. Hold the pose and breathe. Breath, and let's go back into a reverse. Lift up, you can, either, you can have that front knee bent or you can straighten. Feel that wonderful stretch through your core. Breath, arms out, turn your toes knees forward, arms up, mountain pose, open, receiving, being vulnerable, loving. Breath, arms down, legs together. Good, shake that out. And guess what? I've got the whole other side to do. So I'm gonna move my chair around. Hopefully this feels good, it's a nice good stretch for you. Let's put our hands down close to the um, center of the chair so that they're perpendicular to the floor. Back leg, if you turn your chair, if not, it would be your left leg. Right leg back. Nice little runner stretch, turn your toe out slightly. Breath. Let's open to the front. Once again, if you want to straighten that front leg for a little bit stronger triangle pose, that's fine. You work with whatever feels good for you. Breathe, try to empty your mind, just focusing on your breath and the stretch. Breath, bring that arm down, and let's twist to the back wall. Thank you. 
breath, come back to center, bring your body up, and let's do a warrior one, open, stretch, make sure the shoulders are down, push that hip forward, Breath, bring those arms down, turn toward the front, and let's go into warrior two, shoulders level, eyes out over that middle finger, and just breathe. And let's go into reverse. Breath, bring your arms up. Turn the body forward into your mountain pose. And lower the arms, bring the legs together, shake everything out. <clears throat> and we're gonna get ready to sit down. We're gonna work some abs. Let me change our music just a little bit, get us something a little bit softer for our, um, for our floor stuff. I think this floor. I don't mean floor, no, sorry about that. I mean chair. Let's try this. This is gonna be real relaxing, but we're not quite there, but I won't have to change it again. All right, we're gonna work a little bit on quads, um, standing and seated. And then we will do our standing um, hip flexor stretch before we sit down completely. So standing in front of your chair, first, first roll, Make sure the chair's there and it's not gonna slide out. Legs are hip distance apart. You uh, might take you a couple of times to find out just exactly how far away you need to be. But you wanna stick your tap back side out. So in this position, I'm still um, keeping my lower leg perpendicular to the floor. I have my hands on my thighs. They can be hanging. You can put them back here to give you some assistance to sit down in the chair. And I just want you to let the momentum and let your thigh strength get you into the chair. Likewise, standing up, I'm going to open my feet up just a little bit because I like a little bit greater than 90 degree angle. Lean forward. Once again, you can use your chair and your thighs for additional support, or you can work on really strengthening those thighs and let your body come up. When you stand, always push the hip just a little bit forward because these hip flexors get tight. And as we age, they get tighter and, and closer. And uh, pushing slightly forward, especially if you're traveling in the car and you get out at a rest area, be sure to stretch those hips. All right, breath. Exhale. Try to go down as far as you can before the gravity pulls you into the chair. Breath. Lean forward and up and press those hip flexors forward. Let's do a total of six of these. Lean forward and up. Very fundamental movement that you need to stay independent and strong as you grow older. That's the second one. This is three. Looks good. Four. As you do a few, you'll even either find one, two things, you get it and it's easier to do, or you might be becoming tired, but you still find the mechanics that's right for you. All right, this is our last one. This honestly 
as something that you can do every day, not just when you get up, but repeat them several times. Let's stretch our quads real quick before we sit down for good. So that would be standing, either grabbing your pant leg, your ankle, your shoe, or again, wrapping a towel or a band under there to assist you. As you're doing that, once again, push your hip flexors forward so that you've got a good stretch all the way from your kneecap to your hip bone. Very, very important muscles to stretch. Very good, release that. <clears throat> now let's go to the other side. The other option you can do too is put it in the chair, press your hip forward and stretch that way. So if you can't quite get your lower leg up, um, you can push the hip forward, do it on the seat of your chair, and you can also get that wonderful, wonderful quad stretch. Good. Just showing you some different variations there. Because <clears throat> we're not all on the same page with where our bodies are, right? So my motto has always been doing the best you can do with what you got. And everybody's got some different circumstances and that's what we're gonna do is be the best we can be in those circumstances. We're gonna do our abs. So as far as my chair is still sideways, don't forget how to sit down. <clears throat> I want you to come about to the middle of your chair <clears throat> and I'll open my legs a little bit for this one because I want to relax my legs and not use them. So I don't want them in a position where it's easy for me to engage the, um, the legs. Band over your thigh for right now, just put your hands across your chest and just lean back in your chair, <clears throat> kind of in a straight, but a little bit of a curve. I don't want you slumping down, nor do I want you with an arched um, back. Just a very relaxed and sort of scoops um, core. But that doesn't mean that the abs aren't engaged. So you're pulling them in um, just to hold them like you were holding in a girdle. You're just pulling the abs in to support your back. All right, so we'll start with the hands over the chest and hips are forward, um, my legs are forward. My goal is to try to lift without engaging the hip flexors. So I want to imagine that there is a plumb line right from my sternum and as I lift, I lift up from here and then I just curl back a bit to go down. So breath, exhale, engage the abs, set up nice and tall, breath, then exhale, pull the abs in as you go down. So you have two ways of doing this. Very slow would be inhale, exhale, curl up and hold it as you inhale again. And then exhale, pull them in. So this one has a lot more control and you can really pull the abs in. If you want something a little quicker, um, because that's good too for um, a change in a variation, you would just inhale, exhale, inhale, Exhale. So in, out. So either one is fine. They both had their benefits. Then it's kind of good to mix it up. All right. So we've got the principle, right? Okay. Let's lean back. Now get your band. It's going to go around the back of the chair. And then just bring the ends in your thumbs and just cross them right there where we talked about, right where your sternum is where you might have that plumb line to the sky, okay? This will be a little bit harder, so it's going to be most important for you to resist using your legs to lift, your, lift yourself up. So take a breath, relax, think of relaxing the thighs and coming up from your chest. Exhale, breath, and release, but resist against the band. And that's a whole different bunch of muscles that are having um, to work in what we call an eccentric contraction, the opposite of what makes the muscle contract. Breath, exhale, breath, curl back. All right, we're gonna do some faster too in a minute. Breath, exhale, pull those abs in. Just think it's all here. Breath, exhale, pull the abs in, round your back and control. Good, breath, exhale up. And again, if you don't want to use a band, you don't have to use a band or a, uh, a tube. 
You can still just use the strength of your body and your body's weight. Breath, exhale, and release. Okay, now let's try it in single count. So we're going to do eight, which is the breath and an exhale. Okay, inhale, exhale, count with me. Eight, because this will make you breathe out. Seven, six, five, Inhale, four, inhale, three, two, and one. Very good. One more thing we're gonna do before we start our abs and rest as we're going to do a crisscross for the obliques. So my arms are out here to the side. Um, let's lift your, let's say your right knee. Let's lift your right knee. Lift your left shoulder off, turn it toward that knee, turn your hand toward, and come back to the center and down. So one shoulder is always on the back of the chair and one is up. Good. So crisscross, it really helps too. If you look at the direction you're crisscrossing, it gives you even more of an oblique work. So rotate and center. Rotate and center, and yes, you'll get some arm work in this as well, but hopefully you're feeling it in your abs and your obliques. Let's do four more, and three, two, and one. Very good. All right, release that band. Slide yourself back, open those legs, and let's stretch them back out. So just lean forward and let that back stretch. So no matter how hard, if your abs are not super, super duper strong, you're going to also use the muscles in your back. That's not a bad thing. It just means it's good to stretch them out when we're done. <coughs> let your head hang. Just breathe and relax a bit. In this position, swap your hands over to the outside of your right thigh. If they're on your um, thigh, just take your torso over that right leg and just let the body hang. Try and remember, keep your left hip down. That really will stretch the left hip. Now walk over to the center. And let's go to the other leg. So your hands are on the floor on the outside. If you can't do that, you just have them resting on your thigh. And dangle, however, is best for you. Keeping that right hip down on the chair. And walk your hands back to the center. Do bring them to your thigh breath. And curl up. Pull your belly button in as you curl up. Set up tall breath. Sink that energy. Still working on the back and the torso. I would like for you to turn to the right. Bring your left hand to the outside of your thigh. Right hand back behind your chair or holding onto your chair and rotate your body around your spine as if you were wrapping ribbons around a pole. Turn and lift and feel that awesome stretch from your neck to your tailbone. Breath. Uncurl, and let's go to the other side.
and back to the center. Sit back in your chair. Take your right leg and just circle that ankle. We did a lot of good work standing, so remembering our feet support us 24-7. Wiggle your toes. Spread them out of your shoes. Get those ankles around and shake, shake that foot. Very important parts of our body that we sometimes overlook. Stretching that ankle out and the other direction. Stretch your toes, squeeze them together, loosen it, shake it out. Very good. Breath again. Ah, bring those shoulders down. The palms are going to face the back wall. Breath. Turn your palms forward, open your chest, turn your head to the right as far as you can. Opening, receiving, feeling that pull from middle finger to the other middle finger. Breath, bring the arms center and relax. And now let's turn the other direction. In Qigong, this is called Wise Al turns her head. Breath. And relax. One more each way. Palms open, shoulders stretch back, shoulder blades squeeze, neck turns as far as you can. And relax. And the other side. And relax. Another set of shoulder rolls back and around. Four back and four forward. Very good. Remember we talked about our chin exercises to help strengthen the back of your neck. Push that chin in and back as if you were pushing it to the back wall. Hold, squeeze, and release to neutral. Once again. Push the chin back as if you're pressing the back of your head to the wall behind you. And release. One more, push back. And release. So there's one more hip opening, relaxing I wanna do. Bring your body forward, open the legs. And just let your body circle. It's as if the base of your skull is circling around your tailbone. It doesn't have to be big. It's just kind of a nice limbering, sort of a massage in the hips. So you squeeze back, go to the side, press the chest forward. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be real deliberate. It should be just gentle and easy. It should feel really good in your hips. And one last good massage. For your internal organs, waking them up. They're working their most efficient, keeping you healthy, strengthening your immune system, making you stronger, body, mind, and spirit. Now let's go the other way. So just reverse whatever way you're going. And just imagine that you're just making a circle right over your tailbone, using your shoulders as the circle and the base of your skull. Good. That does feel good. All right. Come back to center. Legs together. Slide yourself comfortably back in your chair. Palms just resting, facing the sky, resting on your lap. I want you to close your eyes. Let yourself feel the heaviness of your body right now. Feel how heavy your seat is sitting in the chair. And your legs planted on the earth. Toes spread out as if you've anchored your tree, grounded yourself. And while all that feels very heavy, 
Think of your head, the energy out the top of your head, your crown chakra opening, helping you feel light, spiritual, having a connection with others, with God, with nature. And just breathe breaths in and out, feeling so alive, so energized, positive energy running through your body head to toe. You've just spent the last, last hour letting out all that dis-ease, that anxiety, that tension out of your body. So with each breath, the next breath you breathe in, any last bits of that, feel that healing light consume your body as you exhale, pushing out all the negativity and things that you do not need in your body. Breath in, healing, oxygen, rich air, and blow out all that that you no longer need in your life, your body, your spirit, your soul. Let it go. Just do a few of those breaths here. Breathing in the good, the new life, exhaling the negativity, the dis-ease, the things you no longer want. Release the arms in this next breath. Breathe up. Arms overhead, prayer hands together. Hands to heart, shoulders relaxed, elbows by your side. Eyes closed and focused on all the many blessings. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be 